we have discussed about chemical fuels, calorific value and types of calorific value in our previous session. Let us discuss how to determine calorific value of a solid or liquid fuel using bomb calorimeter. So solid or calorific value of a solid or liquid fuel can be determined using bomb calorimeter whereas calorific value of a gaseous fuel can be determined using Boyce calorimeter. So Boyce is the name of a scientist. So here the syllabus we don't have Boyce calorimeter we have only determination of calorific value of solid or liquid fuel. So your bomb calorimeter looks like this. Okay, it contains bomb calorimeter consists of a platinum crucible which is placed in the center of the <coughs> it is uh, it, uh, bomb calorimeter consists of a platinum crucible. Okay, so in which you're going to take a fuel sample, a known weight of a fuel sample. It might be platinum or ceramic crucible. Why platinum or ceramic? Because it will not react with the fuel. Platinum is inert and ceramic will also not react with the any type of fuel. So the crucible is placed in a well insulated stainless steel vessel. You can see that, right? That stainless steel vessel is known as bomb. So therefore, it is called as bomb calorimeter. So bomb because that stainless steel vessel is known as bomb. So this bomb is equipped with, the bomb is equipped with oxygen valve because for combustion oxygen is very very essential, isn't it? So it is equipped with oxygen valve, you can see there oxygen supply and is also equipped with electric ignition system. We cannot take open and we cannot ignite with a matchbox or a lighter. So therefore it is equipped with electric ignition system when you connect it what will happen a small spark will be produced and that spark is sufficient to ignite the fuel so this entire setup will be kept in a well insulated copper vessel that thick uh, gray color is called as copper vessel that copper vessel is called as a calorimeter so now you got to know what is bomb what is calorimeter that well insulated copper vessel is known as calorimeter. So this calorimeter consists of known weight of water, stirrer and thermometer. Okay, it consists of what? Known weight of water, stirrer and thermometer. Why is, mm, so now what we are going to do, this is about the construction of the calorimeter. So now let us see how this calorimeter will work. So whatever I have told, I have explained over here. Okay, now let us see the working. So initially, before we are going to take a known weight of uh, fuel in the ceramic crucible. So before igniting the fuel, the initial temperature of water is noted down. The fuel is ignited, the fuel is ignited using electric ignition system and the heat will be liberated. So the liberated heat will be absorbed by the surrounding water which is present around the bomb. So once the water is absorbed by the surrounding water, what happens? The temperature will increase slowly. So in order to see that the heat is uniform throughout the water, there is stir. Okay. So using the stirrer, it is uh, the when the stirs what will happen the heat is distributed uniformly throughout so when there is a final temperature rise the final temperature will be noted down so by knowing the rise in temperature temperature difference and the mass of the fuel taken in the calorimeter the and weight of calorimeter and other accessories we can determine the calorific value of the given or known uh, mass of the fuel as follows so the, let us consider the mass of the fuel as mkg, weight of water taken in calorimeter as w1 kg, weight of water equivalent of calorimeter as w2 kg. So why should we want, why should we take weight of water taken in calorimeter because for instance let us consider in a bowl we have 
100 ml of water in another bowl we have 50 ml of water so we are going to heat the same 50 ml and 100 ml of water for 5 minutes okay at same uh, uh, fuel i mean uh, the uh, stove at the same uh, heat okay so what will happen uh, intensity of heat intensity of the flame will be same for 50 ml and 100 ml after 5 minutes you can see the 50 ml of water temperature will be very high whereas 100 ml will be very very less so that is the reason we are going to take the weight of the water also into consideration so water equivalent means it is nothing but the weight of stirrer the weight of calorimeter and other accessories because even they it will absorb stirrer will absorb the heat right so calorimeter is in a conductor even that also will absorb the heat therefore the that also will be taken into consideration so total water equivalent is w1 plus w2 so initial temperature is t1 degree celsius final temperature is t2 degree celsius so by knowing that this so it is given as so let us consider amount of heat liberated by n kg of fuel is so when uh, amount of uh, heat is liberated what will happen that heat will be absorbed by water and other accessories present in the calorie meter so therefore q equals t2 minus t1 so amount of heat absorbed is given by what rise in temperature t2 minus t1 and w1 plus w2 is the other total water equivalent right so we are going to minimize it as gcv equals the t2 minus t1 w1 plus w2 divided by m into 4.187 kilojoules per kg so this it will come without 4.187 so in order to convert calories into kilojoules, 4.187 is the conversion factor. 4.187 is the conversion factor. As you know, GCV includes the what latent heat of steam also. It is amount of heat liberated by by condensing the water vapor into liquid water. When that also included in GCV. So suppose to remove that water uh, amount of heat liberated by water vapor we are condensed into water liquid and we are going to know we are supposed to want we, we, we want only amount of heat hidden uh, energy heat energy in the fuel so that is ncv so how to determine ncv so ncv is given as gcv minus latent heat of condensation so gcv is amount of heat liberated by fuel plus amount of heat liberal obtained by condensing the what water vapor that is latent heat of steam so if you remove the latent heat of steam we get only amount of heat liberated by fuel right so in gc we are going to subtract latent heat of steam then we get ncv so ncv equals gcv minus 0 0.09 into percentage of hydrogen into 587 into 4.187 kilojoules per kg so 587 what is 587 so 587 is when one gram of fuel is when one gram of water vapor is condensed from water vapor to water liquid we get 587 grams of uh, calories of heat so that depends upon what percentage of hydrogen present right so uh, if two percent hydrogen is present then two into 587 if three then three into 587 so 4.187 it is nothing but once again conversion factor from calories to kilojoules per kg right it's very simple so by this we can calculate gcv gross calorific value of a solid or liquid fuel and also you can uh, calculate net calorific value ncv right okay thank you